Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're integrating using trigonometric identities so we can answer questions from exercise 11c. Now there are some um, integrals that it's not so easy to be able to integrate. For example this tan squared integral here. We can't just unfortunately square anything from our formula booklet. Um, so we're going to need to use a trig identity to turn the tan squared into something that's identical to tan squared that's easier to integrate. Now, if you remember, we have sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. How does this relate to tan? Well, if we take this identity here and divide everything by cos squared, then we get the identity for tan squared plus 1 equals sex squared. Now, we can kind of rearrange this quite simply to tan squared equals sex squared minus 1. And if you remember, sex squared is a lot easier to integrate than tan squared because sex squared is the result of a formula booklet differentiation. So in this case here, integrating tan squared is not done by integrating tan squared, it's done by integrating sex squared minus 1. So we're just replacing what we're integrating with something that's equivalent to it using a trig identity and then integrating that trig identity. Sex squared, if we look on the top of the formula booklet here, integrates back to tan. And then remember, a number doesn't just disappear like it does in differentiation, it actually goes up a power, so it goes to minus x. And then obviously we need to plus c afterwards. Great, so there we are, that's how we integrate tan. Another one here might be sine 3x cos 3x. Now this vaguely looks familiar. Where you've got a sine and a cos multiplying together, it appears in the sine double angle formula. So if you remember sine 2x equals 2 sine x cos x, now we'd really like to triple the angles that are on the right hand side here. So if I triple the angle on the left hand side as well, then I'm going to get sine 6x equals 2 sine 3x cos 3x. Uh, but I don't really want this 2 at the front either, so I'll have to half that out to the front. So it's going to be a half sine 6x equals sine 3x cos 3x. So instead of integrating this, we're going to be integrating something that's identical to it. A half sine 6x. So the integral of a half sine 6x looks much easier to integrate. We're just going to move round the trigonometric circle, so it's minus sine, minus cos, back to sine. So in this case here, sine will move backwards round the differentiation circle to minus cos, and we're going to divide by the 6 to the front as well. So in this case here, it's going to be minus 1 twelfth cos 6x plus c. Simplifying this, yet yeah, we can see that it's going to be minus a twelfth cos x plus c. Another one that you might be able to do if we expand the brackets properly is sec squared, so sec x plus tan x all squared. Now let's expand the brackets first to see what we've actually got if we have these separately. Now we the only part we cannot integrate in this term here is tan squared. We can do sec sec squared, that's an antiderivative in our formula booklet, and sec tan is a derivative in our formula booklet as well. So we're going to need to turn tan squared into sec squared minus 1, just like we did in the first example. So in this case here, turn that into a sec squared minus 1. Now we can group like terms together because obviously we've got two sec squareds there and then integrate this term by term. So sec squared integrates back to tan, so it'd be 2 tan. Minus 1, well that's a number so we need to go to minus 1x now. And then 2 sec x tan x is in the formula booklet so we're going to need to um, integrate that back to 2 sec x plus c. Okay, the last one here is the integral with boundaries. So we're going to just look at the integral first, and then we'll think about the boundaries afterwards. Uh, it's going to be sine squared as the integral. Now, we can't just integrate sine squared off the bat here. What trig identity do we know that has sine squared in it? Well, we know sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, but then we'd have to integrate the cos squared. So we'd just be going around in a circle there. Um, something that we also know is that the cos double angle rule, cos 2x, is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Now, if we rearrange this a little bit, 
adding the cos 2x to both sides, so adding the 2 sine squared x to both sides and subtracting cos 2x to both sides, we'd get 2 sine squared x equals 1 minus cos 2x, and if we half everything as well, we're going to get sine squared x equals a half minus a half cos 2x. So instead of integrating sine squared x, we're going to be integrating half minus half cos 2x. Now in this case here, we're going to integrate the individual components separately. Uh, we could pull out the factor of a half. We can effectively do the factorizing of this. Um, it would be quite helpful if we were to do that. Now we're going to start integrating. So 1 integrates to x and cos 2x integrates to minus a half uh, sine 2x. Now we'll leave the half out the front until the end. So now we're going to substitute in our limits. Pi by 8 will go in and then we'll subtract pi by 12 going in. And use your calculator to work out the individual components here. And then simplify everything at the end. Keep on going, simplifying, multiplying out brackets, being really careful of double negatives. They may get in your way for an incorrect answer. And there we go. Uh, we're virtually there. One more step, it looks like. We then have to multiply out the half that we factorised out at the start. So it's pi by 48 plus 1 minus root 2 all over 8. So there we go. That's the answer to this question here. So for some questions, you don't integrate directly. You integrate through a trig identity. Right then, your turn to have a go at these two here. These two, I really do expect you, once you've got to an exam stage, to just remember how to do on autopilot. So I don't want you to be able to think about it. In this question here, where you're having a go at it for the first time, definitely have a think about it. But eventually, you need to be on autopilot integrating these two. So pause the video and try these two questions out. Right, okay then, we've seen how to integrate sine squared, so if you weren't able to do this, you could have re round the video to have a look. So cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. I'm just doing this on the side of my page rather than in the main space for my integral answer. I then, I'm then going to rearrange this into sine squared x equals a half minus a half cos 2x. But what I'll probably integrate is with the half factorised out to the front. So it's going to be a half 1 minus cos 2x dx. So then it's going to integrate to a half brackets x minus a half sine 2x because we divide the 2 to the front and then we plus c. We're going to do cos squared in a very similar way. Cos 2x is equal to 2 cos squared x minus 1. We're going to add 1 onto both sides and then half everything. So it's going to be cos 2x plus 1. That's equal to 2 cos squared x. And then divide everything by a half. We'll just put the half factorised out to the front. So in this case here, we're going to integrate 1 half. So a half times the integral of cos 2x plus 1 dx. Now cos integrates to positive sine, so it's going to be positive a half sine 2x plus x plus c afterwards. Okay, a couple more that are a little bit more challenging. Have a go at these two here. You may need the formula booklet to help you out. So pause the video and try these two questions out. Right then, let's have a go at these two questions here then. So the first thing I'm going to do with the first question is I'm going to expand the brackets. So it's going to be cot squared minus 2 cot x cosec x plus cosec squared x. Now, having a look at what I've got here, there's nothing on my formula book that tells me how to integrate cot. So I'm going to have to sort that one out second. Uh, 
The second part here, cot cosec, yeah, that's a derivative in my formula booklet, so that bit should be fine. And cosec squared here, that's a derivative in my formula booklet, so that one should be fine as well. The thing I need to sort out is cot squared. Now, if you remember, there is an identity that links cot squared to something else. If you take sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, and in order to create cot squared, you want to divide the cos squared by sine squared. So if we divide sine squared by everything, sorry, divide everything by sine squared, we're going to get an answer that is 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x. And we know how to integrate cosec squared, that is minus cot. So if we subtract 1 onto the other side at that point there, then that will be great. So we'll move the minus 1 over there. So instead of integrating cot, I'm going to integrate this thing here. So the way that we're going to integrate cot squared is by integrating cosec squared minus 1. And then we're going to have to integrate everything else as well. So let's just rewrite that all out. And then let's group like terms together. So we've got two cosec squared, so we'll group those two together. So it'd be two cosec squared x minus two cot x cosec x. And then we can't forget about this minus 1 at the end as well. We'll also have to integrate that. So the answer here is going to be, now for cosec squared, the answer to the derivative of this is cot. Um, so it was, uh, we want the positive integral that we're going to use. So we want a minus on that um, derivative there. So it's going to be minus cot x, 2 at the front as well. And then for the next bit here, it's minus cot cosec. Now, we've already got it as a minus, so it's going to integrate to a positive 2 cosec x. And then the minus 1 here is going to integrate to minus x, and then we plus c on the end as well. OK, so for the next bit, um, I think we're going to have a look at simplifying what we've got on the bottom here. Let's leave it on the bottom for now. Now effectively what we've got on the bottom is sine x times cos x all being squared. And we know that there is uh, a formula that links um, sine and cos being multiplied together. It is the double angle rule for sine. The double angle rule for sine is 2 sine x cos x. And in this case here, what we'll have to do is we'll have to half it onto the other side as well so, so that we can replace sine x cos x with a half sine 2x. Now remember, all of this is being squared. And it looks a bit funny that we've got a fraction over another fraction, but that should sort itself out in a little while. When we expand the brackets here, we're going to get 1 over a quarter uh, sine squared 2x. The 2 doesn't get squared when it's inside the bracket of the sine. Now the next thing we're going to do is 1 divided by a quarter, that's 4. And 1 divided by sine, that's cosec squared. Now in this case here, we know that there is an integral for cosec squared. The integral for cosec squared is minus cot x. But because there's a 2 at the front as well, we're going to need to divide by that 2. So it's 4 divided by 2, and it's going to be a negative as well, because we're integrating positive cosec squared. So it's going to be minus 4 over 2 cot 2x plus c. Or in other words, if we fully simplify this, it's going to be minus 2 cot 2x plus c. Great, so there we are. That's the answer to that question there. Then, so have plenty of practice from 11c, uh, page 300. There are lots of good integral stuff there. Uh, make sure you have lots of practice at this before we move on to the harder stuff later on in this chapter. So, thanks very much for watching.